Broadcast tonight, the Prime Minister says thousands of jobs on the horizon for Bahamians. Also ahead tonight, you won't believe why these pastors are in court. And Atlantis can be fun for the kids, which means fun for the parents. Find out how. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Dollars and projects are underway here in the country, translating into thousands of jobs as well for Bahamians across the islands. Good evening and welcome to The Bahamas Tonight. I'm Andrew Knowles coming to you live from Marina Village here on Paradise Island. I'm Keisha Latterly. Thanks so much for looking in. Now that coming from the nation's chief today as he presented his mid-year budget statement to Parliament. Tonight, Carla Palmer tells us the nation's chief noted how investor confidence is growing and highlighted developments nationwide. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie says the government's efforts to further develop and expand the economy and provide employment opportunities for Bahamians are paying off. The economy of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas is growing yes, yes. and unemployment is now declining. We have clearly gotten through the worst of the global crisis and I'm to say this morning that the future looks very bright. The Prime Minister's optimism is born in the reported facts as he highlighted one project after the other, currently underway throughout the country and others in the pipeline. In Grand Bahama, a joint venture with the Sunwing Blue Diamond Group and Hutchison Vampour and, and the government for a new four-star memories resort creating up to 1,000 jobs. The opening in Grand Bahama of the Island Outsource Contact Center in Freeport with a projected 200 employees by year end. And the list goes on. For instance, in the Abacos at Baker's Bay Upscale Residential Resort, the new port, the new terminal at Marsh Harbor International Airport, more new jobs, says Prime Minister Christie. At Blackfly Fishing Lodge and the Sandpiper Inn, an additional 150 new jobs. In Bimini, at the Genting Resort and Casino, 500 more jobs. The same goes for developments in the Berry Islands, North Andros, Bird Key and Whale Key, Exuma and San Salvador. Club Med has now joined with Canadian partners to carry out a $90 million refurbishment and expansion project at Columbus Isle Village. New opportunities for new behaviors, Mr. Speaker. Back here in New Providence, Prime Minister Christie disclosed that Atlantis Resort is proceeding with a $40 million upgrade and expansion of the Cove Hotel and Royal Towers properties. Similarly is the Albany Resort, which is about to employ 1,300 people in its next phase of construction and 300 in its operational stage. Mark Holowesco's boutique resort at Lifeford Key is reportedly advancing. So two are upgrades at the Palms Hotel, the Prime Minister announced. This new Bahama development is scheduled to open at the year end. And it is scheduled to, to provide a minimum of 5,000 new permanent jobs. Where there is consternation, Mr. Speaker, we will obviously help them to count the jobs and to count the new jobs. Prime Minister Christie says the government has a multifaceted plan and fundamental to it is economic renewal, job creation and social progress. I'm Carla Palmer for ZNS Network News. Equally as important, Prime Minister Christie also announced that the government's fiscal plan is on target this year. He says the government will meet the GFS deficit objective for 2013-2014 that it set out in last May's budget communication. I am confident that through the ongoing prudence in the management of our fiscal affairs through the end of June, we can, in fact, do better than our deficit target this year. Yes, sir. 
Meantime, the opposition free national movement is calling the Prime Minister's mid-year budget communication nothing more than a contradiction. Candino Knowles tells us tonight that the party plans to hold the government to its word of being transparent and accountable and is calling for the passage of the Freedom of Information Act. Prime Minister Perry Christie talked much about job creation in his midterm budget communication. But opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis said the Prime Minister didn't mention anything about Bahamian ownership. I think as Bahamians and young Bahamians, we want to hear how do they, how do they fit in this economic pie as opposed to just jobs. We are looking forward to opportunities and ownership. Jobs aside, Dr. Minnis said he was surprised to hear the Prime Minister speak so strongly about how transparent his government has been, especially in the Ministry of Finance. With those words, I look forward very soon for the Prime Minister to introduce the Freedom of Inf Information Act because that's when you're truly talking about transparency and accountability. So we'd see whether he is sincere about the words he mentioned here. But more than that, the opposition leader said he was looking forward to hearing from government about the radiation contamination going on in Jamaica as a result of cars being imported from Japan, especially considering the hundreds, if not thousands, of Japanese vehicles making it into the country. Jamaica has made a statement on this issue already. And um, the Bahamas government has said nothing. I think the Ministry of Health and um, Environment needs to address this, this matter as urgently as possible because our population can possibly be exposed to cancer. We, we see an increase in cancer within our community. Candino Knowles, ZNS Network News. Superintendent Clayton Fernando, among the witnesses testifying in the XL Josie Maurice and Brister attempted murder and armed robbery trial today. During the proceedings, Fernando recalled the fateful night back in April of last year when he was accosted by two men in the driveway of his St. Vincent Road home. He said his attackers were both tall, between 5 feet 11 inches and 6 feet tall, and were both wearing dark colored hoodies. Fernando said one of the men was of a dark complexion and wore cornrows, while the other was of a lighter complexion with plaits protruding from his hoodie. Fernandez said the lighter complexion man pulled a gun on him and the darker male attempted to rob him of his chain. He said the incident unfolded in the seconds shortly after he heard two or three gunshots and realized he had sustained injuries to his chest and hand. Exo Josie and Maurice Ambrister are accused of the crime. Convicted a father of having unlawful sex with his 15 year old daughter. That verdict handed down this afternoon. During the trial, the child testified that the abuse took place 10 times between November and December of 2010. She told jurors that on one occasion, her father held a knife to her throat and threatened to kill her if she told anybody about the abuse. Justice Indra Charles will sentence the father at a later date. Testimony began today in the Javan Colbrook murder trial. Colbrook is accused of killing 20-year-old Lyndon Bethel Jr. back in October of 2010 following an altercation at the Illusions nightclub on East Bay Street. During today's proceedings, the court heard from the mother of the deceased who testified that she identified her son at the Rand Morgue shortly after he was killed. Darnell Dorsett and Charles Newbold III are appearing on behalf of the Crown. Ty Pinder makes up the defense. Justice Vera Watkins is hearing the case. Two men were arraigned for crimes against a 15-year-old boy. A 27-year-old pastor, Alec, in the green suit, was charged with one count of indecent sexual assault. It is alleged that on Saturday, February 1, 2014, here in New Providence, that the pastor, Alec, did indecently assault a 15-year-old boy. The pastor, Alec, pleaded not guilty to the charge. On the second count, the pastor, Alec, along with a 25-year-old youth pastor in the black shirt, were charged with one count of cruelty to children. It is alleged that between January 31st, 2014 and February 1st, 2014, the two pastors gave gave a 15-year-old boy an intoxicating liquor in a manner likely to cause injury to his health. Both men pled not guilty to the charge. Despite the prosecution not objecting to bail, Justice Joy Ann Ferguson Pratt deferred her decision on bail until tomorrow. Ramona Farkasin Seymour, who is defending both men, argued that neither men has ever been convicted of a crime, have good standing in the community, and are men of the cloth. Despite this, Justice Ferguson Pratt stated that she needed time to make her ruling. 
The mother and son shot in that brazen home invasion yesterday remain in hospital tonight in serious condition. Judith Blair and her son Marvin were at their home in Blue Hill Heights when gunmen burst in an apparent, in an apparent robbery plot. The pair was shot before the gunman fled. The search continues tonight for those suspects. Police confirming that they now have two wanted murder suspects in custody, thanks to some help from U.S. law enforcement officials. 18-year-old Leo Bethel and 21-year-old Ramil Gray were arrested by U.S. authorities in Miami, Florida, between December 30th and January 2nd. Superintendent Stephen Deal told, Dean told ZNS News that both were deported to the Capitol this week and are now being questioned by police. Bethel was the fifth suspect wanted in connection for last year's shooting death of American visitor Kyle Bruner. The case grabbed U.S. headlines last year after the Chicago native was shot while trying to help a woman who was being robbed. Four men have so far been arraigned in connection with that murder. He was also wanted for the murder of Terrell Knowles. Meanwhile, Rumel Gray was wanted for questioning in the murder of Sean Munnings back on February 4th. Munnings was reportedly stabbed to the neck following an altercation with Gray. The Ministry of Transport and Aviation was paid a courtesy call by officials from the U.S. State Transportation Administration. The TSA officials who were led by the USA Transport and Security Administrator, Mr. John Pistol, met with the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin to execute an agreement that would provide the Sir Linden Pinling International Airport with $100,000 worth of security equipment. Mr. Pistol, who is the first person in this capacity to visit the country, highlighted the importance of the equipment to modern security demands. Screening equipment that we signed an agreement uh, with the government of the Bahamas today is designed to enhance the level of security screening for what we see as the most viable threats today and those are the type of uh, devices that may not have metal in them and so this equipment helps uh, detect explosives uh, either on a person or their accessible property. Now, Minister Hannah Martin also noted the importance of the equipment to maintaining pre-clearance standards. We're one of the few countries in the world that has a pre-clearance agreement with the United States. Um, part of that pre-clearance arrangement, um, first of all, it's a huge boon to our economy because it allows for an ease and convenience of travel that is unprecedented in most airports in, in the world. And so this is a very valued um, facility for us in our economy. The country's first prime minister is about to be memorialized with a new life-sized bronze statue which will be erected at the country's main airport hub which already bears his name. Minister of Transport and Aviation, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, announced today the signing of a $74,000 contract for the construction and erection of the new statue of the late Salindan Pindling with Abaco artist and sculpture Peter Johnson. During a press conference at the House of Assembly today, Hannah Martin said the signing was a proud moment in the country's history as it represents the first ever life-size statue of any leader and also signifies the beginning of a new kind of recognition for those that have contributed to national development. We are recognizing one of the founding fathers of our country. It does come at a time 40 years of independence with the holiday of January 10th being commemorated a few, a few weeks ago. And the, the erection of this, of a statue of Linden Pending, culminates the, or symbolizes, the journey of our people, um, which has been one that has been fraught with struggle and victory. And um, this, is, this, this act is important because we are beginning this, the physical embodiment of those persons who represent, who are large in our history. But large not just in their own right, but large because they reflect the aspirations and hopes and dreams and struggles of our own people. The minister thanked the committee involved in the extensive selection and decision-making process, which included a number of representatives from various government agencies. The statue will be crafted and constructed in Abaco over the next few months and is set to be complete just in time for this year's independent celebrations. The man behind the Uber task explains just what will go into making the massive statue. The technique that we will be using is about 5,000 years old. It's called the Lost Wax Process. And we will initially sculpt the piece uh, with these delicate little fingers. <laughs> and from there, we will do about five steps. And ultimately, we will cast uh, silicon bronze, which is the finest of the bronzes, at about 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit is poured into the mold. 
And, and anyway, this should take about five to six months to produce this piece uh, with our best efforts. In our first look at weather live here from Reno Village at the Atlantis, the weather is beginning to change. We had a few light sprinkles earlier on. Those light sprinkles will develop into heavier showers and thunderstorms late tonight and during the early uh, morning hours as that fall system uh, moves in here. But right now at Marina Village, we have partly cloudy skies. Your temperature is 75 degrees, relative humidity 84%. Winds out of the southeast at 8 knots, your biometric pressure 1,017.6 millibars. That's 30.05 inches and it is rising. But stay tuned. Temperatures around the family fowls, travel and boating forecast is still to come. I've got some killer dance moves coming up in the Bahamas tonight just in time for any Valentine's Day party. Find out where you can get down with me in the Bahamas tonight. Still looking for a last minute gift for your Valentine? We may be able to help you. And the youth program looks to save the future. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by Shell Quality Fuels.